once you start working your way towards the 14 gram mark, anything can happen. Close, I've gotten up to 23 grams. Uh, now again, my caveat is I'm not recommending this, uh, and I'm not even saying that it's it's productive in the traditional sense. If your intention is to use these to heal from a trauma like PTSD or to ascertain answers from, from the universe, um, this might leave you with more questions than answers. So typically what I do when I'm going on a hero's journey, uh, which is really above the seven gram mark, um, and typically I like to start there and then I'll work my way up to, you know, wherever it is that I'm going to end up within that context. One thing that I can say before we even get to the actual journey itself is that you're going to want to fast and, and, and you want to bring the same intention and respect to the mushrooms as you would with ayahuasca. If your intention is to, to use them in, in any kind of productive form. Um, you're also going to want to ground yourself. You're going to want to really pay attention to set and setting, especially if you're going really, really far. So you, you definitely want to have a safe, quiet space where you're not going to be interrupted. Nobody else is going to be bothering you. Um, if you are going to journey with someone, especially at a really high dose, I would recommend just one other person. You don't want more energies to deal with and that person needs to be grounded. Whether they're legitimately spotting you and they're completely sober and they understand that you could be going into some you know, challenging territory for periods of time. Um, you just wanna have that experience with that person. If they are gonna be journeying with you, uh, you definitely want to make sure that they're in a healthy mental state beforehand and that they're able to work with this substance in a, in a, in a way that's not going to hinder anyone else. Okay. So that, that's one of the, one of the main caveats is try, if, if you can do it by yourself, that's number one. If you can't one other person and they really need to be at a similar level, um, as far as being able to handle themselves. So aside from the typical methods of, of, of grounding, like meditation and breath work, hape is really good. Um, but it's one of these things to where once you embark on this journey, uh, especially once you start working your way towards the 14 gram mark, anything can happen. Uh, honestly, uh, it's, it's not uncommon to go into bouts of psychosis. Uh, for periods of time, which can be extremely terrifying. Um, I have had uh, legitimate death experiences where, you know, there was moments for prolonged periods of time that I, I was convinced that I, I left my body and I was dead and I was someplace else and I would never be able to get back and it was horrible. Um, so the psychosis, the death events, uh, and just leaving your body in general, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when you, when you start really moving past the 14 gram mark, uh, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed that at some point you will lose your body. You will lose time sense of time and space, which are these metrics that we just really don't even think about, but guide us everywhere. Um, and those are gone. And there are definitely entities and energies out there with that you're interacting with, some with not with your best interest at heart. Um, so the more disconnected and confused you are, the, the more terrifying it, it can become. Um, but again, this was more in the spirit of exploration for me versus like actually trying to find some kind of healing. I'm just wondering what else is out there and what it's like to to can I can I start feeling more comfortable without my body? Can I start feeling more comfortable without understanding that like time might just be completely fictitious, right? Um, and the answer to that is yes, uh, which is which is why I've kind of worked my way up. The first time that I did a fourteen gram dose, 
Uh, I did have a death experience. Uh, before that, I was experiencing what would be essentially just cosmic bliss. Um, and then at a certain point, I had a full Dante's Inferno situation where I went to hell and I experienced hell for a, a period of time and didn't know if I was ever going to get out of there. And um, it was uh, brutal and terrifying and the feelings and energies that I was being uh, bombarded with, just grief and sorrow and it was a lot of crying. Um, there's uh, bouts of psychosis, you know, that I had gotten myself into this situation where I, I thought that I had essentially taken too many mushrooms and died and um, ended up in, in this place in which uh, I felt all of the pain and emotions that I'd ever conveyed onto others um, unknowingly, some sometimes knowingly, uh, and, and I was dealing with all of that energy coming back on me. And it was, uh, it was horrible. It was, it was, it was absolutely horrible uh, to the point that when, after I came back from that half ounce journey, I didn't take mushrooms for an entire year. I didn't take ayahuasca for an entire, just pretty much nothing. Um, and it was a, a big, big reset. After that, uh, I started working my way back to the half ounce and, and, and now past that. Again, I don't even know how much I'll be journeying, you know, into that no man's land, into that, you know, 20 gram area, 20 gram plus area, because it just seems hard to bring stuff back. Even if you can get more comfortable, you know, traveling through these different dimensions um, without certain modalities. It's one of these things to where the further you go and the faster you get there, the, the, the less likely you are to bring anything back at all. So you are having these wild experiences and not all of them are horrible. You know, a lot of them actually are incredibly beautiful. Um, and, and encounters with incredible beings and incredible worlds and just seeing some of the most amazing aesthetics. Everything's glowing. Everything's made of just bright beams of light. Um, a lot of the times you just have this like euphoric energy, this like divinity level consciousness of just like all knowingness and like connected to everyone and everything. It's amazing. But then what I started to notice was that it's just like you are experiencing knowledge in, in these vastly distant places. Um, you are experiencing some of the most, you know, blissful euphoric experiences that you've ever had to the point to where like you don't even want to come back from these an angelic realms, right? But when you do, which always happens, it's whether you're in heaven or you're in, 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 in these hell-like situations, you come back. And the further you went, the less likely it is that you're gonna, you're gonna bring you know, anything back, sometimes even memories. You know you had a wild experience, it was a wild time. You could be communicating with somebody here, your friend, your spotter, telling them what it is that you're seeing and what you're experiencing. Um, and then by the time you get back, it's like waking up from a crazy vivid dream, but it's just like you know, minutes later you start to forget it by the time you're drinking your coffee, you're, you know, walking, you know, out of the house of an hour later, it's just, you can't, re it's like amnesia. You can't bring back anything. Um, so that's kind of what I've, what I've experienced, uh, you know, really just being out there and, uh, you know, just kind of journeying to see what the possibilities are, um, what the terrain is like, uh, how I'll feel when I get out there, uh, when I get into those depths. And um, it's, it's, it's incredible to, to, to do it. Um, and, and, and there are amazing things to take away. And it's also incredible feeling more and more comfortable the further that I venture out because there, there, there is a lot to learn out there.